Hey everybody, welcome back to Airsoftology Mondays, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also promises they aren't drinking moonshine. And if you guys watched the last episode, you'll know what I'm talking about. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, first off, let me get a couple things out of the way. No, I, you saw my mason jar on the uh, table last week, and I want to talk about it. It's just my water. I forgot I left it in the shot. I watched it at the end of the video. I was like, oh man. In fact, I made two mistakes. That, and then I totally messed up on the edit. Of course, you guys, with your eagle eyes, caught it last week, uh, a little bit later in the show. I've got to get back up on my game. I was a little under the weather. That's why I had the water and everything there uh, next to me. So it was a little rough day and uh, today I'm actually feeling great. So we're back to 100%. And I got a couple big thank yous this week. One Code Red headset sends me a whole bunch of stuff. In fact, if you guys are going to be at Broken Home, come track me down. I might have a few things to give away. Maybe you want to find me on Friday. I only got a handful of like some patches and stuff like that from uh, Code Red and actually a few other people as well as Z-Shot. They sent me a handful of their little patches too because I got my system of PTW tuned up by the guys over there. Big thanks to them. Uh, they do great work. Send it out. They did a full tune-up on it and sent it back to me and it is running better than ever. So if you guys are big into system of PTWs and things like that, it's definitely worth if you are a little beyond the comfort level of maintenance, the guys up at Z-Shot are awesome. Also on top of all this, I got something in. So before we get to the questions, I want to show you guys this. This came in honestly right as I was hitting the record button and I stopped and I had to go out and get it. So this one may take a couple seconds to open. This is from Red Wolf and I know what it is and I'm pretty excited about it because this is a pretty darn rare offering. If I can figure out, they have taped this thing up to no end. So uh, did a good job. Oh, here we go. Actually get right into it. So guys, this is going to be exciting. Oh, and I know you guys always ask me, this is a uh, Gerber downrange, if you guys are asking. Uh, it's the one with the nicer steel. It's the S3, uh, S30V steel on it. Um, really love this knife. I've had it for years. It's my everyday carry. So this is from Red Wolf Airsoft. They sent it overseas, so it's all packaged nicely. Sent it out a couple, two-day air, I think. And, uh, man, it's better packaging than most places I've seen. Let me kind of get it up here for you guys. This is really cool because this is a pistol. And uh, it's not your normal airsoft pistol by any means. This one is definitely, definitely unique. And I can't wait. I'm going to do a review on this one. I want to get a, a couple weeks of good use into it, make sure uh, it's all settled it down. Um, here's one part of it. It's a holster. And then the other part of it is down here. Let me get all this mess out of the way for you guys. This is it. And if you guys are fans of Ghost in the Shell, this is going to be very familiar to you. The Mataba, uh, or Mataba, or however you want to pronounce it, by Marujan. Uh, I have been, I have to admit, I'm a huge fan of the anime. I've watched it for years and years and years, and uh, I always thought it was super cool. I'm a big fan of Togusa, and this, of course, is his pistol. And I know I'm totally geeking out on you guys because you normally don't see me geek out about anime and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, this one is going to be really neat. I'm excited about to get the review going. This is the heavyweight version that comes with the holster, too, so it's kind of the full kit. Uh, I'll have a review up for this. Give me, like I said, a few weeks. So we'll look around mid-June. I want to get some time in on it to give you guys a full teardown, but I had to share it with you since it showed up right before the show. But enough of uh, the show and tell lesson. Let's dive on in to hear what you're really for, and that is your questions. Marcus Matter writes, Hey Jonathan, I love the show and here's my question. Do the M4 magazines in the back have an Airsoftology mag wrap on them? Thanks, keep up the good work. Yeah, and actually this is just one of many questions I got on these, and yes, they are. These are custom mag wraps from Tactical Imaging, and that's Tactical, not Tactical. So uh, I'll have a link down in the description in the show notes. I also have, uh, I did have a link in the last show in the show notes. It was just kind of buried down in there, but I didn't mention it. I just had these in the background. I uh, had a lot of people asking about these. And yes, he made uh, custom mag wraps for me. This, he's got a bunch of different ones, but he can do custom ones as well. Uh, I even had people ask if I was going to start carrying these in the store. I don't know if you guys are interested. I may start carrying I keep a small amount, sell through them, and see if you guys like them. Uh, I can do that because it is kind of a custom item for Airsoftology. But yeah, if you guys are interested, it is tacticalimaging.com. And again, I'll have a link right down in the description for you. The American Tactical Defense Airsoft Project writes, question, what happens when you have to drop some doo-doo at a mil op? 
Ah, oh, the ultimate question, what to do when you gotta go number two. Uh, good news is most mill sim ops have some sort of facilities you can hit up. For example, I'm going to Broken Home this weekend, American Mill Sim's putting it on Broken Home 4, and they actually have really nice facilities. I mean, full men's and women's, showers, bathrooms, the works, everything's functional out there. It's a really great facility. Even though you're kinda out in the country, it's unwell and they've got power out there. It's, it's actually really well done. Uh, most of them, in fact, most of the people I've been to or places I've been to have at minimum, they bring in port john so there's something for you. Fear not, it's not like you gotta dig a latrine in the woods and you know act like a bear and, and take care of business. But uh, that is a very valid question. Actually, I've got it a couple other times before and I figured why not answer it this time. Ryan Snyder comes in with a long one here. Hey Jonathan, need help? I bought an Aries Amoeba AM013 with 11-1 LiPo battery and a smart charger, and when I first charged the battery, I knew you're supposed to leave it until full, and I did. But after hours of use, when it died, I put it on the charger, and the charger would not recognize the battery. I tried everything to get it to charge, but it wouldn't. Please now tell me what not to do if I need a replacement. Keep up the good work. Okay, so uh, you see smart charger, and I'm kind of curious of what's going on there. If you're using a balance charger, so on a LiPo, and I'm gonna grab one here, you get two plugs here. So if you have, there's some balance chargers that you plug this in to charge, like this will be a Tamiya or a Dean's or whatever you have on it, and then you'll plug this into a certain port and you'll choose the balance mode. What that does is make sure the cells in this one, this is an 11-1 LiPo, oh, there's three cells in an 11-1 that all three don't get ahead of each other, because when one gets topped off, it'll kind of report back to the things full, or it'll overfill one and cause problems with your battery. Um, the other kind you'll find just plug into this port only, this little special weird one that you won't plug into your gun and charge through it and it's a balance only charger and it'll cut off when all the cells are full. It kind of auto senses, it knows that okay there's four plugs, you got an 11-1, if there's three plugs you got a 7-4 uh, and so forth. So yeah that's probably what happened. If you're using a standard charger and you were just charging through this, you probably overcharged one of the cells because it's not gonna balance this out as it goes. And then when you drained it, you may have drained the ones that were lower. So one got really charged up and the other two were who knows where they were. You'll drain those first before the other one drains out and then you end up killing your battery. And uh, it can happen really easily. Just make sure when you get a LiPo that you're getting a balance charger to go with it. Also, don't run your battery down till it's dead if it's a LiPo. Unlike nickel metal hydrides and nickel cadmiums, well even NICADs you're going to have a little bit of problem, but with LiPos, if you run it all the way down to where it's just toast and you can't fire it anymore, you can do some serious damage to these batteries or break them by doing that. So just a couple quick tips on LiPos. I know I get a lot of questions on that, but in your specific case, I wanted to help you out. Renock 3 writes, what do you think about trading gear and guns through the internet? You know, that's a tough one. I will buy guns or gear from people on forums. It's the only handful of like online groups on Facebook that I trust. And if it's somebody I don't know, I usually ask for vouches. And I do sell all my gear on there as well from time to time. I, I go to the forums and groups, things like that. But when it comes to trading, that's really touchy. You're gonna really wanna make sure you check out the person. I'm not a big fan of trading because it means that somebody's gotta ship it and then the other person's gotta get it and the other person's gotta ship it and you're, you're shipping two things cross and it just gets a bit hairy. It's a risk and just be prepared that if you do that trade there's a possibility you might not be getting what you think you're getting. There's no protection in the transaction or you may not get it at all but uh, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. It's just a dice roll. Kaiseki writes, hey Jonathan, what would be in your loadout for low light environments? So yeah, I got a few things in my kit I would probably do. Uh, multiple flashlights, I would say weapon light, uh, and definitely a handheld one, because sometimes you may wanna kinda walk back if you've been hit, you may wanna peek around a corner and not expose yourself with a flashlight, or you're behind cover and you wanna maybe put the light up and kinda barely peek so you don't get shot, because usually people shoot toward the light. And if you're kind of like over to the right and the light's over to the left, you might avoid some shooting while you're trying to scope out areas. Another thing is dead lights, uh, like red flashing lights. You can usually pick them up around Halloween or anywhere at like uh, hardware stores, Walmart, things like that. Pick up a few of them because you can have them on your helmet, your front, your back. Because if you just have one on your helmet, sometimes it's not visible and you can still get shot. So I like to have a bunch of those on when I'm going back to respawn. And then on top of all that, getting good gear I think matters. And this is one of the times we're buying something a little nicer that has solution dyed webbing or solution dyed nylon counts. Uh, if you guys didn't know this, if you don't have solution dyed, which usually the good military stuff like LBT, LBX, uh, any of the nicer brands out there, like stuff that's real gear, are gonna have solution dyed webbing. And it shows up as the same color tone, not really color, but the same tone as it does during daylight, during visible. So under night vision, if it's kind of like a medium tan, it'll like be a medium green and it'll blend in. So your plate carrier and everything all kind of looks still like what it is and you can still use it for camouflage. If you don't have solution dyed, like some of the cheaper uh, repro stuff, then it shows up as pitch black. 
and it's crazy because then it's night you're wearing like you know, this big black blob or worse you've got good nylon but like the webbing is not solution dyed so then you look like a zebra with big black stripes going across you and you're really easy to pick out so that's something if you guys don't run night vision a lot something you may not know it might be worth if you're playing a lot of night games picking up some good gear Vladimir Smith writes, Hey Jonathan, do you think running HPA guns at big Milsom events is a good idea? How well do they stack up against AEGs that don't have the line attached and are free to move more? Love the show, thanks. So yeah, Copperhead, when you guys watch the video, uh, I used uh, my HPA rig the whole time. I actually have a Polar Star Fusion engine, the new version, I think it's version three, and I ran it the entire weekend. And to be honest, you notice it right at first. That's my first big game I played with an HPA rig. Well, I played a little bit, I take that back, at Broken Home last year, but it was just a little bit. Uh, for maybe the first 10 minutes, it's there, and then you totally forget about it. I've never had one issue. There's one part of the game where I did have to do some work, and that was actually I had to change the chip out of my camera, so I did unhook the line and set the gun down, and then I got caught in an ambush, and you guys will see the video when I get it put up, and I got it back together, and it, it was a little bit of a challenge because I had to get back together, but once you've used it, it's not a big deal. I've never felt crippled by it, and I just, to be honest, I think the semi-auto response and a well-tuned HPA rig is really good, and you can just hide the tank in your back. I know there's some purists out there that'll be like no HPAs and there's some events that uh, really lean toward the realism side that may or may not really enjoy them there but I personally think they're fantastic they work well especially for that semi-auto just that you can get those shots off so quick and I mean I'm pretty fast with that trigger finger just from playing a lot of online games and it's the same as your mouse button so you end up kind of building that finger response for that muscle memory so yeah for me I really enjoy the HPA this next game I'm not gonna be running HPA most of the game I think I'm gonna do AEGs most of the time but uh I might bust out an HPA rig a little bit toward the end of the game. We'll see. Well, guys, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for my video recommendation of the week. And this one comes from a huge channel buddy of mine, Jet. But this is one I just started watching again. I was like, this is a really good video. It's uh, kind of covers some points that I see some frustrations with personally, and I see a lot of games. And it's, it's kind of educational if you look at it, but his frustrations he has and how he explains it during this game. So it's his Trap series from the Mako Center in... Kansas City, I believe, is where they're based out of. And it was last year, around this time, so about one calendar year ago, and this video came out as a series from a uh, game he played out there at the Mac. And it's really good about pushing up, about getting... You know, making sure your team moves with you and covers you and not playing with people you normally play with, playing with like kind of pickup people or going to a remote field for the first time. You can deal with some of these challenges if you don't know the play style and the type of players there and what they're used to doing. So this is a great video from an educational standpoint and pushing up you know, and trying to make sure your team comes with you and not getting too far ahead and what to do when you get too far ahead, not just give up and just keep pushing and, and try to do your best to take out the other team. But it's really fun, really entertaining, and of course, I always love Jets videos. So give it a check out. It'll be down in the description below. All right, guys, it's another show under our belt, and I do have something to tell you guys. I know I promised you last week the loadout video, and I know it's... I, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm so genuinely sorry. Uh, it is done. It is absolutely done. It is going out this week. I was going to put up today, but I didn't want to have two videos uh, going up the same day because the way YouTube kind of works, it'll kind of stomp on the other one. So yeah, I did get it all complete. So stay tuned on that one. It's coming up. In fact, I'll even put a little mini me over here in the corner so you guys can prove for truth that I'm right there. See? See, it's real. Here's a real loadout video. That's me. See, no worries. It is coming, I promise. So stay tuned. Wednesday of this week, I'm going to have it. Also got another review coming up at the end of this week. Um, Mondays next week will probably be on Tuesdays. So just give you a heads up. So coming back from Broken Home late, I'll be on coming back on Monday. I'm not going to be able to shoot on Monday. So we're going to see a Tuesday's video next week. So guys, stay tuned because it is a holiday. It's Memorial Day here in the U.S. Uh, for outside of the U.S., you guys may not know that. So Monday is a Memorial Day holiday. So I'll have it up for you guys on Tuesday of next week. So you get an extra day to get all your questions in in the comment section below. And of course, that's how you get on the show. Put them down there, vote up your favorites, and I'll get them on the show. And if you don't get them answered, if you're not, I do pay attention and I'll make sure I get yours on a later show. I have a big bucket of ones I've saved. I'm going to kind of do a best of questions that were forgotten episode where I go through all those from much older videos and answer your guys' questions. And I think I'm going to start doing that maybe in a few weeks from now. So I kind of mix that in as an episode once in a while. But guys, as always, thank you so much for supporting the show. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you more than anything else for having a great community down there in the comment section below. That matters so much to me. You guys helping each other answer questions because I mean, I get so many great comments down there. And unfortunately, I can't answer all of them. I wish I could on the show and even have 
have time to answer them all, but I love the fact that you guys help each other out down there. So until next week, go out, have some fun, play some airsoft, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.